What's up, my dudes? This is Dustin Stelzer with another episode of Electrician U, and today we're going to talk electric current. So amps, amperes, ampelamps. What is electric current? So electric current is essentially movement of electrons. Um, it's not essentially the electrons themselves moving that is current. Current is actually the, the, the byproduct of the movement of electrons uh, through a material. So when you look at different materials, like right now, this wire has a whole shitload of atoms inside of it. Each one of those atoms, it's copper, uh, each one of these atoms has an outer shell of electrons. And in this outer shell, there's only one electron. That's what makes, elect uh, that's what makes copper such a good conductor. If this had like four electrons, it wouldn't be as good of a conductor. Um, if it had like seven electrons, uh, it would be very, very difficult for it to conduct. It could conduct, but it would be a lot more difficult. So um, think on that term, like there's a whole shitload of atoms that are just smashed together inside of here. And each one of their layers that the electrons are in kind of overlap a bit because they are squished so tightly together. That's what makes this thing a solid. But if we were to um, put a positive charge on one end of this and a negative charge on one end of this, since electrons by nature are negative in charge, you put a, a negative charge on one side and those negative charged electrons are going to move away from that negative charge towards the positive side. So that's usually what we do is we have a battery, you know, and we take a, put a positive on this side and a negative on this side and the electrons push away from that, the, uh, uh, the negative side and go to the positive side. So let's go to the whiteboard. All right, so I'm going to do like, I guess a basic DC example. Um, so say we've got a battery and we've got a negative and we've got a positive. Well, say we've got this, um, say we've got this large wire. All right, that is this. That's our piece of wire. Well, inside of here, we've got all these atoms. And each one of these little circles is gonna represent the valence layer or the outer layer of uh, electrons that are making up this atom. There's all kinds of little particles, protons, neutrons inside these atoms. Well, how current travels, how, how electrons travel through this material, remember this is so incredibly packed tight together that an electron doesn't just sit here and move. Oops, sorry, can't see that. But electrons don't move in straight lines. So what you can think about uh, with electrons and their movement is, say we've got one right here, well, this one is going to take this path, and then it's going to go around this atom, and it's going to take this path and this path, and it's always going to be in a forward direction, but it doesn't ever take a, like a, a guaranteed path. Most of the time, it has random movement to it. Now, the stronger the charges that you put on either end of this wire, the stronger the positive and stronger the negative, the more straight those charges are going to move. Um, still not directly straight, but the more powerful you can push them, the less deviation they're going to have along their path. But every single one of these atoms is doing that. So we've got the atom over here that's, that's you know, when this one gives up, when this uh, atom gives up an electron, it makes an opening for this one to travel to. When this one, uh, you know, and then when this one moves, it loses its electron, so it can accept another electron from here. That's really all current is, is it's a massive 
surge of a whole shitload of electrons that are getting bumped out of their, their atoms and that are accepting new ones. So when an, when an electron, um, say we've got three layers of electrons, I don't know how many different layers copper has, but I do know that it has one electron in its outer layer. Um, so when you have two of these, there's an electron there and an electron there. When this electron comes into this, uh, this valence shell, this valence layer of this atom, this electron is pushed out because this charge is negative and this charge is negative. So all electrons are negative. So when a negative charge meets a negative charge, they repel each other. They can't attract. So a negative charge would have to try to attract to a positive charge. So that's why all of these things happen. When you introduce a negative charge to an electron, it's going to move the weakest part of that atom out of its atom, which is the electron. So it's going to push that electron to the next atom. Well, since there's only one there, it's going to push that electron out of its atom, and the next one's going to do the same thing. And all the while, they're filling in behind them, but they're continually moving. So um, for AC electricity to work, for it to be useful, you have to be able to push electrons in a direction. Now, with AC and DC, they require movement to be useful. You can't run a ballast. You can't run a, a vacuum cleaner. You can't do anything without movement of electrons. You can have a discharge of electrons, and that's static electricity, like lightning. You know, you have a massive of amount of electrons, of charges from electrons that are flowing, and it's creating this byproduct around it, this magnetic energy around it, um, and it creates heat. It creates a lot of things. So, uh, the the only way that electricity is is usable is if it's moving. So that's what alternating current does. Alternating current pushes electrons down a path in one direction. And then it reverses directions, and it pushes them back, and it pushes them back, and pushes them back, and it just keeps going like that. So the electrons that you're seeing in AC, or that you're not seeing, rather, because you, they're so damn small that you can't see them. Um, you know, say you've got a tele telephone pole here, and you've got a telephone pole here, and this goes here, and this goes here, and this goes here. So all of these little electrons that are inside one of these wires, they don't, every time an, an, an alternation happens, an alternating current, this electron never makes it all the way over here by the time the, the current is uh, reverse direction. In all reality, each one of these electrons probably moves a hair, and then it moves back. So when you, when you cycle you know, and, and like fast forward uh, what each electron is doing, they're really just vibrating. They're vibrating back and forth within a relatively fixed position. They're probably going to move a little here and a little there. But because it's 60 hertz, 60 hertz means 60 cycles per second. So 60 times per second, an electron is going this way, and then it's quickly ripped back on a leash, and it's going this way. <clears throat> so it's like 120 times a second it's moving, but it's going 60 times a second in each direction. So um, you got to think of electricity, instead of thinking of it as like electrons going from like pole to pole, think of them as just like barely moving at all. So electrons themselves don't travel far. I mean, say you had like a 30 mile distance from you know this beginning pole to this pole. You got a whole shitload of poles in between. But over 30 miles, it's going to take one electron a hell of a long time to, to eventually move all the way down to that farthest pole 30 miles away. It would take forever. But the effects of electricity, the effects of the current are instantaneous. So have you ever seen those little, uh, I don't know what the hell they're called, but uh, all of my like science teachers had one, but it's like ball, a ball, a ball, a ball, a ball, and a ball. And this ball swings. And this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one swings. And it's on like, I don't know, a little fucking thing with a 
thing on the stand and when you pull this ball back it swings in and hits this ball which makes this ball right here fling up into the air and then it comes back down hits it none of these move they just transfer energy and it sends this one back up that's essentially the exact same thing that electric uh, current does so an electron will move and because it's moving it's influencing all of the other electrons down the entire length of that wire instantaneously so at damn near the speed of light that's why you know like you can you can send on those power lines that i had here you could send a hundred thousand volts down one side of it and within the the turning on of a flashlight the current at the other end moves it's not that the at the electrons on this side traveled all the way over to there it's that one bumped one and it made all of them motherfuckers move the entire way. So uh, that's another phenomenon about current is that it travels at the speed of light, but each individual charge within itself doesn't really go that far. Um, and the whole 30 mile thing that I was explaining, that's really more of a, of a proper analogy for DC electricity. You know, if you had DC going down a power line, it's eventually gonna get down there. With AC, I'm pretty sure with a pretty high certainty that the electrons that are in a certain place never really get to go far beyond where they're at because it's changing so fast. So, and it's an equal thing. Like electricity is a balance. Everything is about balance. So if it moves a certain distance in one direction, it's gonna move a certain distance back in that other direction. It's never gonna like move forward twice and then only move backward once unless there's some kind of power quality issue or there's some kind of you know, something burning up or something like that, I suppose. But that's essentially what current is. It's pretty easy to understand what the, uh, the basics of it is, but how does current relate to electricians and the equipment that we hook up? Um, so if you have a certain amount of current going through a wire, you have a, uh, you have a force that you're able to do something with. Um, say you took 20 amps of electricity and you ran it through this wire. This wire is number 12. That's the trade size designator. Um, since this is number 12, number 12 is actually rated for 20 amps. But if you tried to run 60 amps through this wire, this wire would start to get red hot. Um, not very quickly, probably over a long time. If you ran 200 amps through this, this thing would get really, really, really fucking hot and it would start glowing. So the amount of current that runs through a certain amount of material or a certain conductor is a really, really important thing to pay attention to. So the reason that we have breakers in this industry and fuses is that if too much current goes through a wire rather than it starting to glow red hot and just fucking explode or catch on fire, we have breakers that will detect how much current is going through a, a wire and it'll cut that off if it gets to a level that's too high. So. Um, I hope all of that made sense. It's, it's pretty simple. When you talk about current, how much current is going through something, or how many amperes, nobody says amperes unless you're like not from America. I don't know, I guess we just say amps. <laughs> we're, we're, like, we're like the simplest speaking, dopish kind of people, so America, we say amps. Um, but a lot of people say amperes, and a lot of people just say current, how much current is flowing through that wire how many amps are going through that wire. Um, so that's it, that's the general gist of what current is and what amperes are. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave something in the, in the comments below. Um, if you have any other ideas or if you wanna know a little bit deeper, like how does current move through an air conditioner or like how does current move through a transformer, you know, like transformers aren't even touching, they just move through the middle of the air, like how the hell does that even happen? But if you have anything like suggestions or comments, um, Please either go to electricianu.com and leave them under this video. Um, go to Facebook, electrician, the electrician you, and you can leave some comments there. Um, I'm everywhere, Twitter, Instagram, all that shit, or just leave some comments down below. Also, make sure that you click the notifications daily so that if you like these episodes, you can get notified the next time that I do one. So, uh, I love you guys. Be safe out there. See you in the next episode.